everybody. Um, my name is Ian Morris. Yeah. My colleague uh, Edith is here with me today. Um, so, uh, just to make sure you're in the right place, this is uh, localism, digital platforms, talking a bit with you. We're talking about uh, collaboration and engagement, um, kind of coming from a local authority background, yeah. actually, to make fun things. I even have a room. That's good. Yeah. Excellent. That's the right answer. Okay, let's close the door and the lockets. Thank, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, before we talk about uh, others, let's talk a little bit about you. So, what I'd, what I'd like to do first of all, please, um, hi there, hi, hi welcome, thanks for being on time. <laughs> what I'd like to do, please, is uh, when you find your seats, before you have on your seats, you just stand up for me, please. Please. Stand up. I know you just sat down, but we're working here, guys, thanks very much. No, we're not playing heads and tails, but it is a great game. Yeah, it's a really good game. Um, right, so, so to start off with, what I'd like to do is. Um, uh, if you're from the local government or central government sector, so if you, if you work in local government, central government, if you could just move towards this side, the left side, as I say, or your, your right side of the room. And if, if you're you from... You're back to your places, don't you? If, 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 you're, if you're in the private sector, can you move up to this side of the room? And if you're from neither the local government, central government, or the private sector, you can kind of hang around in the middle. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> local government, central government. Private sector. Let people stay there. You're fine. Uh, and, 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 and somewhere stuck in the middle with you. So, uh, you said where you're from? Southbridge, you're welcome. Um, and, uh, gentlemen there, you're... From Action for children. Action for children, okay. And over here we've got Trinity Experts. Trinity Experts system, excellent. I've forgotten those already. Thank you very much anyway. So what I'd like, I'd like you to do is if you have already implemented uh, digital platforms for collaboration and engagement in your organization, can you move to this side of the room? If you've if you have already used digital platforms for collaboration and engagement, move to this side of the room. If, if you haven't done anything on digital platforms and engagement in your organisation, move to this side of the room. And if you're kind of somewhere stuck in the middle doing some stuff at the moment, in the middle of the room somewhere, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, it's really good. Uh, you, sir, are uh, yeah, in from Northumberland. Um, and uh, so are you, you, you've, uh, you're sort of in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. That's, that's very good. Who's that? Gentleman here. I'm from two local councils in Hampshire. Excellent. <laughs> well, well, I represent <coughs> the yeah. yeah. And you've put you've put platforms in place. Yeah. That's excellent. Really good. Yeah. And um, <laughs> somebody who's. There are not many of you, but over that far side of the room? Uh, private sector, so... Okay, it's, uh, where are you from, sir? Horizon. Horizon, you're very welcome today, thank you very much. So, um, that's nearly the end of the movement, but one, just one last thing, can you do me a favour? So, um, local government and central government colleagues, can you just put your hands up in the air like this, please? No, two, but, but if you can, both hands, if it's convenient for you to do both hands, if not, one will do. Um, uh, private sector colleagues, could you put your hands up in the air and put your hands together, please, like this? Thank you very much. And those that are from neither of those organisations, just put your hands out here somewhere like that for me. Thanks very much. Can you just smile? <laughs> uh, that's great. I think. I've got that. You can put your hands down now. Thanks very much. Sorry, I'm just tweeting. It's still an innovation. Uh, it's done. We have a standing ovation in the conference. Edith, we can go. Yeah. You're free. You're free to do what you want. Sit down. Thank you. I'm really happy to see you. There's one free. Yeah, yeah. As long as my coffee doesn't disappear. I'm Should we make them tell you? Edith, tell us a bit about you. Um, yeah, just to give you a bit of background. Uh, my name is Edith Galliers. I'm the policy manager at Redbridge Council. I've been working in local government for about 10 years now, um, starting community development work where I was having drive to community halls with no idea of IT and lots of residents around me. Um, I have moved to the policy sector and I'm in the corporate centre of local government now, but I like to think I've taken the ethos of working with residents on a regular basis and try to implement that in the corporate centre um, in our corporate engagement through our digital platforms. 
And then in a sideline, um, I also do charity work for a charity called Friends Living Girls School, building um, a school in Southend Down. We've just opened our doors to the first 40 girls over there. <coughs> and I coordinate a group of volunteers in London to try and raise money in the UK to help develop that school. So I also work with uh, peers and colleagues and try and motivate them through various different digital channels in my spare time when I can. <laughs> Great, thank, thank you. Um, I'm Ian Morris. Um, uh, I first job in the public sector after university was working for a non departmental government body that sadly didn't make it through the bonfire of the Congo, which no longer exists. Um, I then uh, had a few years with one of the big national housing associations before I kind of stumbled into local government about 12 years ago. Um, had a variety of roles in there, kind of head of service level, running both operational service areas and uh, and also more sort of um, strategic areas, of course, uh, corporate policy and strategy. Um, and uh, I uh, bought some software from the company that's sponsoring this event, who um, got very well with them and the software, and they offered me a job a couple of years ago. So I kind of left the light and into the, into the dark side, uh, apologies to colleagues from the private sector, um, uh, a couple of years ago, and, and I'm thoroughly enjoying that. So I currently have uh, very direct sort of movement experience in, in policy making and engagement uh, using digital platforms. Um, at the moment, I work with Objective um, on a, a non-tech level, um, working on sort of implementation of change programs or policy engagement. I'm not going to talk to you about that or, or really about our software. Although, if anybody wants to talk to us about the software, we're on stand 12 out there. Um, so, come and say hello. And also, I'm a bit of a geek around policy making engagement. My, my MBA dissertation uh, last year was around um, rational decision making models in, in public policy making. So, if you want to talk geeky or you want to read any papers that are really, really geeky, uh, just let me know the session. And again, I can't remember to talk about those today. Um, uh, and just in terms of credentialising, so you know, the, the software that I've, I've had experience working with has been with all sorts of different agencies, so private agency, Valor Regen, so great type of the private sector regeneration company, Durham County Council, who was my last local government employer. Um, and uh, uh, it, all this was on the, on the deck, so you can, I'm not going to make the point, but you can go and find out more about software that's not really what to talk about. So, um, so, why, so why have we picked Reservoir Dogs as a theme for this? Uh, and um, just letting you know, literally sat in the first session this morning, I'm getting text messages from our comms team. My CEO is over from Australia this week visiting, so a number of my senior managers are quite twitchy and I, I was told that I might need to pull the deck because it wasn't corporate. Um, and I, I, I won't tell you what I said because you're Ladies and gentlemen, but I, I've said no, we're sticking with this. So, why, why have we picked Reservoir Dogs and why isn't it isn't related with objective stuff? Well, there's uh, four things really. One is that Edith and I have worked together for a few years on different things. We, we found out very recently that's a shared personal favourite of ours, so we're just having fun, frankly. Um, uh, it's a cult classic, uh, but it's uh, uh, top, of the, of the top 50 indie films of all time by Empire Magazine. Crucially, it's about a botched project. That was botched just by having a team of constant professionals, but it all went a bit wrong. Some, some nods in the room. Uh, and it involves violence, cultural references, um, uh, profuse profanity, a non linear storyline, much like many ICT change projects that I've been involved in in the past. So, for that reason alone, hopefully, you'll stick with me as we go through this. Edith is going to talk to you about some of the characters and we're going to work, the workshop itself. So, um, one of the uh, beautiful things about the characters of Reservoir Dogs is I think that they relate very, very closely to some of our peers and colleagues when trying to implement an IT project. Um, there's various different characters. I don't know how many people have seen the film. It has been out for 20 years, but I've tried to avoid spoilers because it is called Classic and we might inspire the image if you haven't already. Um, but uh, Joe, who's just hiding at the back here, he's like the boss figure. So he relies on his inset instincts. He sets everyone up to do a heist as part of the film, and he can read people in the situation. Um, and he'll also pick out the rotten eggs quite easily and be able to take them out and say, this is what I want, this is the vision, this is my team to go and do it. So I see him as senior management or members. Um, his son uh, is nice guy Eddie in this beautiful tracksuit, and uh, he helps set up the heist. He's got a keen interest in it, he's got a good relationship with all of our boys in black, but he doesn't actually do any of the robbing. I'll call him an interested middle manager um, who wants to be involved, wants to get a good idea about what your IT platform's doing, but doesn't actually do any of the implementation as much. 
And then we've got our uh, six dogs. So we've got Mr. Blonde over here, Vic Vega. He's a stud, he's witty, he's slick, he's also a psycho. Uh, he's violent on the inside, appears normal and starts a killing spree during the film. That's in the first 20 minutes, so I'm not, that's not really a spoiler. Um, but what I would say is there's not that many psychos, but what we do have within uh, our organisations that we work in <coughs> is that we have a lot of people that are slick, that are on it, that um, have got the wit and the charm and pick things up easily, but they can be a bit of a loose cannon. So they've got all the ideas, they're off they go, suddenly they're over here trying to implement something without talking to anybody else, losing sight of the bigger picture. Could be a kill screw. Um, but we won't go there. Um, then we've got Mr. White at the front here. He's the father figure. He is uh, nice but tough. He's calm and knowledgeable. He's all business, um, but he's got a bit of a temper and can be a bit stubborn. And I would say this is someone who is a long timer either in the industry or in the organisation. Um, they know their stuff. They know their people. They're putting their users first. And um, they are keen on working on new ways. They're keen on identifying new digital solutions or this newfangled IT situation. They're up for it. If you push them too hard, if you're going too hard with it, they're going to get stubborn. They're going to put their foot down and they're going to cause a bit of a block. So useful file figure that can have some difficulties in it. Um, Mr. Brown here, um, he's annoying, opinionated, um, very blunt don't need to describe anybody in any organisation, we'll just move on. Uh, Mr Orange, now um, Mr Orange appears naive, a little bit oblivious, a bit childish in the film, but actually he's the undercover cop, again not a spoiler from the first 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> so he's working on the inside, so on the top he might appear like he doesn't really know what's going on, or doesn't see the bigger picture, or doesn't understand it, it's got a lot more going on underneath and he's holding a lot more stuff together. For me, this is the person that's sent on that IT training, is sent to get involved in this, that doesn't really know whether they're there. And when you do that straw poll at the start of any training, he's like, my boss told me to come. You know, oh, this could go either way. Um, but once you get working with them, they're a diamond in the rough. They pick it up quickly. They've got a lot to offer. There's a lot there. They just need a bit of direction and a bit of shaping to help get them on side. Um, now we've got uh, Mr. Pink here, the jackass. He is um, street smart. He knows how to survive the fight. He comes out the top, but he's a bit of a player. He's a bit of a I know it all, aren't I great, a bit laid back. And um, for me, that's somebody who probably has worked on the front line, really knows their residents, is street plant smart, knows if we push, I was going to say Mr. Smith, but I've tried to avoid colours. If we push a resident too far, it's going to respond in this way. Well, actually, we shouldn't have this fight over here with this corporate director because this is going to happen. And they get it, they're on it, but they're also the first person to make fun of the situation, of the residents, of the users. They, they, they get it. Um, so they might appear a bit of a jackass, but again, a lot of skill is inside there. And then we've got, in the very end, Mr. Blue, who in the entire film has about 50 words. Um, we don't see him after half an hour in the film, and there's no explanation of what happens to him in the film. And for me, this is that person that sends you that really polite email that says, this sounds like a really good idea. Really interested in your IT training or your customer user involvement. It doesn't turn up to anything that you never hear from them again. And you just wonder whether one day you're going to open a door and they'll be there, um, and possibly not. And so I think that our Reservoir Docs and our team here for me, characterises some of the personalities that when you're trying to implement any kind of project, specifically in IT or user engagement, you get those characters that you have to work with. And depending on how well we manage them, influence, influences how well our projects work overall. Yeah? Okay, so uh, what we want to do shortly is uh, you get you guys to do some work, because um, frankly I'm not here and, uh, and, and some of those uh, characters, characters, archetypes uh, in, in your kind of contexts. Um, I'm going to have a conversation amongst yourselves about that. 
Um, and then Edith and I are going to give you some reflections from our own experience as practitioners um, about some, some scenarios where those people have come to the fore, some ideas about how to deal with them, and then come on to some other things that you maybe take away with you as, uh, as kind of next steps. Um, just before I do that, um, uh, there, is a, there is a giveaway with this uh, workshop. So if you do with nothing else, you may be leaving with an iPad mini. Um, so that is a lot of peace today. Um, so, um, so you'll see spread spread in the middle of the tables. There's these um, strange things that our great comms people have knocked up. But basically, um, if, if you're inspired by any particular character from the from these uh, character these archetypes, feel free to just write name the name of the character in here. Take a photo of it. Tweet it with the um, hashtag sock spring fourteen <coughs> conference um, the conference hashtag, and um, they'll go into a draw and um, we'll and I've had many a way to somebody draw around them from that. So if you want to win an app, then you do it at some point during this session. Uh, right, the workshop itself, it is. Okay, so what we wanted to do is that um, we've talked about um, digital solutions and different ways of engaging people this morning and different platforms. But as we say, we want to be focusing on the people in this session. <coughs> We, you can have an all spangly, all dancing, whether it's objective, whether it's something else, techno technological solution. But unless you get our characters working together with this, it's not going to be able to be implemented inside an organisation. It's how we get them on board. So what we wanted to do is ask you to spend some time thinking about these characters. We do have a little synopsis of them here to help your conversation. Have you met them? So those people that stood over here that said, I've already implemented it. Have you already met them? Have you already... Um, dealt with them, who do you recognise out of it? Is Joan from accounting one of those? Is she the psycho? Um, how did you deal with them? What issues did you face and how did you get them on board? Um, are you facing them now? Have you got a blockage? Are there people there that are thinking, oh, I've definitely got that person, how am I going to get through that? Um, and really, we just wanted to start the conversation going about the people. So we're going to ask you to work in your tables, and maybe find some more chairs for those of you sat at the back, to have a conversation about the people that you're working with at the moment, and how you think the digital solutions could take them with them. And then we're going to bring back in and have a bit of a conversation about what we've been facing, who the people are, and um, our reflections on how we've found trying to implement these kind of projects and how we've got people on board as well. Is there any questions about that? So just take, take a few minutes to think about it yourselves if you want to, sort of add, add in pairs or singularly, make a few notes, then I'll call you back together to just to work in, say, table groups, as we sat in tables, um, and then we'll get a bit of feedback from the audience. So, sort of 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> okay, is that enough time for everyone to identify their dogs? So, uh, so, can we, so what about um, ob observations then? Um, this table was very animated. I have no idea whether we're going to do with the exercise for that. But did, did you come up with any? But just make it up. I didn't. So, um, so you know, any any kind of observations about some of these some of these characters? Um, and any, you know, let's not name names or even where you're from. Although it's probably chat chat not sure. Um, anybody in there that sort of that leaps out at you? I've seen Mr. Blonde, which is you know I call this kind of superiorism. Right, to get stuck in stuff, developing stuff, and suddenly have no idea what they're doing, what they're doing, what they're doing, they develop some massive communication infrastructure, no one else knows how to use it, or what it's enthusiastic amateur, but you know, really clever, does pick up everything really well, but they've got to be corralled, and it's yeah. to do the right thing. Did you guys hear that, Mr. Bonds, who, enthusiastic amateurs who will pick up an idea or an application or something and go and develop? Something amazing, but actually only they know how to use it and um, need to be corralled. How, so how, how, how do we deal? In thinking about bringing a digital platform to do collaboration and engagement, um, how how might we deal with it, Mr. Lawrence? Right. <laughs> 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 no, it's a good, that's a good point actually, because yeah. how did Mr. Blom get into a position? He went away and did all this stuff. Where's the control over him yeah. within the organisation? It is an organisation after all. It's not just a bunch of volunteers. I am that luxury. I was just wondering why it's Mr. Bond's job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I 
I think uh, what we were discussing was that in, in doing any change management process, wherever it starts, whichever character kicks off a process, you, you have to deal with all these people because every organization has all these people. So wherever it starts and wherever your first point of contact is, you need a strategy for working with all of them and yeah. an engagement strategy there. So you get in one side. So you often said every time, yeah, that's right. So, so you've, you've worked with clients on, I mean, uh, presumably Silica doesn't use Reservoir Dogs as one of its trademarked kind of tools. Not yet. Tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, a lot of chat makes that, that's right, you could be in the fine. Um, okay, so um, uh, table, that table over there, any sort of thoughts or the characters that came out for you? Anything you'd like to share with the group? Well, I think you need a few to respond to the other topic, you need a few Mr. Blunt in your organisation if we're really serious about becoming more agile and innovative. Right. You just need to be, have to be very careful where you place them within your organisation and, and what you let them lose on. I think it's really helpful to have them to actually do things in a, in a little bit of a different way rather than in, in a traditional way, which we claim nowadays that we're all into and are going to, uh, are going to do. Right. Just to dismiss them out of hand, I think you do need to, but you need to keep them on. Okay. So, so if you're here, then we don't fire them uh, necessarily. Um, <laughs> just but, but that's what, maybe there, so. Yeah. <laughs> Slice me with a razor. So, anybody else? Want to, where, 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 where are you in that debate? We need them. We need to sack them. I was going to say well, traditionally. I'm sorry, I'm putting the pigeonhole there. Traditionally, but, but I've, for the sake of it. traditionally I've centralised them. Right. Because actually they're pretty good. All you really want is control of them. Right. But actually, if you centralise them and then they spring up again, it suggests that there's something you're not providing that the area needs, and therefore it's probably a matter of supporting them and bringing them into some kind of structure, whether it's a governance group or whatever that helps, to uh, keep the energy and the enthusiasm and the innovation, but, yeah. to, but to give it some direction. Was that, was that just yeah, a yeah, I said I'd send mine to Newham. So, uh, you said you had to Newham? <laughs> You've never said that before, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll capture that one. There's a, there's a top tip. Sack them all, send them to Newham. It's, it's, it's one and the same, was it? <laughs> you could argue that. I couldn't possibly talk. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay. a, a, apart from sending people to Newham, anything else on the back about any of these characters? Any observations? Uh, Sorry, a couple of observations. Yeah. What you don't know from this is what's really important is how well each gets on with the others right. uh, yeah. to understand any alliances. Uh, you actually target whoever you th first, that whoever is going to be listened to most and influence most other people. Yeah. Um, uh, <coughs> you can't you can easily say just from these characters who that might be, but I think it's a really important thing to think about in right. tackling a mix of people you have to deal with. So is that how you think about sort of early adopters in yeah, some of these change processes that people uh, yeah, and that's really interesting because the, the colleague from um, East Riding, I know the area very well, I'm very close to that, but she, she ad advocated an approach where, where um, these transformation things come not from the service users who, are, who just step forward willingly, but actually thinking about the end user. And I, I kind of, I, I, wanted, I wanted to not, I did not in fact, because it's, it made real sense to me. And then, and then, and then the local government practitioner really went, but it doesn't work like that. You don't get service, service areas coming forward willingly. And, and those who do, who are the adopters, it's kind of preaching to the converted anyway. They'll do what they do. But, so it's yeah, a really you're, 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 you're somebody as an early adopter who's going to say to, to other people, this is really good and it works. And those are people who to listen to that person. Yeah. Maybe to, help, to help make it spread. I don't know how you fit that within this. this yeah, but maybe Joe, Joe should have done more of that. Maybe we'll pick up on that in the LBBD third yeah. dynamic and we will give you some feedback about our, our reflections and experience. Uh, right at the back, anything else from, from you guys, apart from split personalities? <laughs> well, there's a lot of Mr. White's in the organisation, mm -hmm. so I think uh, they're keen to get on board with any kind of change management programme. You can see why they get grumpy and bad tempered most of the time. It's not generally consulted before change is implemented or announced, but they have the experience uh, and the mouse to actually make it work. Yeah, I, I did. I did some work with um, a council not too far away from my head office in Maidenhead, um, 
where um, very early on, I um, just met the chief exec, we were told that we, we couldn't call it a corporate engagement platform because anything with the word corporate would agitate the Mr. Whites, who, who, would, who would straight away become grumpy at the fact that it's called corporate, my, my director is not playing. Um, so we, we called it a, um, we call it, we call it a um, organizational uh, engagement platform. That was fine, that was fine, but, but not corporate. Like a couple of scenes to swear word about. Anything else in the back? No? Guys in the corner there, any observations? Uh, just talking from the private sector, um, I've seen all of this kind of uh, scenario in the private sector, so just underlines the view that there really isn't that much difference between private and public sector when it comes to change management. No, it's really pretty. Somebody who's, who's flipped from the whole career public sector into private recently, it's just the same. It's different, but the same. Amazing. You guys got anything to add? How did, you, how did you get on with the director that you were particularly thinking about? I think we decided that they were probably Mr. Pink, right. using the kind of flippant jackass comments um, rather than hard evidence and facts. To, to take an argument in, in that direction. Yeah. I think partly the guys indulged me in a therapy session around my <laughs> concerns about social care and how to get them fully on board with the effective use of technologies given that the bulk of our remaining yeah. spend in the council is in that area. How, how often the conversations I have are about social care? It's, yeah. it's amazing. So those that want yeah. to work with us generally have done already and yeah. we've made good progress. That's, that's, that's the topic to that. Anybody from, anybody from local government um, had positive experiences working with social care colleagues and getting them engaged? Oh, there's one. <laughs> Thank you. So, so how, how, what do you do? How do you, how do you get them? Was it, was I mean, it in, in general, it's very difficult and very difficult to get um, them to adapt technology. Um, but as an example, where we wanted to have an app where we could, mm -hmm. it could work together and contact each other, etc. Yeah. They were very engaged in helping to design that because they're, they're very keen. Because they say, don't give us complex case management systems. We don't understand it. We don't want to use it. We just want to talk to people. Give us something in our hand that's really simple. That just gives me the absolute bare minimum. And when we said yesterday that they were very engaged in the design design process. So that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, is, is the idea to, to then roll them, once you've got them engaged in that, to then take them further into case management? Is it like a, a Trojan horse, if that's the right analogy, or is, this, is that it? Is that fine? Yeah, it's a Trojan Well, a, a, it's fine to start with, but yeah. it, it, it's meant to be a Trojan horse, it's way bigger than that stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, that's great. Uh, any, any, anybody else for the burning desire to share anything with their colleagues before we move on? No? Okay, that's fine. Um, so just some reflections from us about thinking about this perspective, what, what we've seen work um, uh, and not. Can I kick off, Edith? Um, it's one of those questions when I say, do you want to? Sure. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I think we really, uh, everyone's touched on it. We, we, we kind of know we need to work with everybody there, but it's, it's identifying what they can bring and how we can manage them. So whether we slice up their ears to keep them in line, or whether we uh, use the the other elements. So the Mr. Browns, the people that can be really, obs you know, obstinate and in the way, and sounds like they're challenging everything. Everything we've tried this a hundred times. It's never worked for us. So why should we do it again? Um, sometimes they can generate other ideas and they can get things thinking the other way. Mr. Pink's Guile will help you sell it to users, end users. They know what people really want most of the time. And it might be flippant, but sometimes in their jokes can come up with some fantastic ideas. Um, the undercover advocates for your project, you might think they're a Mr. White. You might think that they're not engaged and you've seen them again, but perhaps it's because they don't know what's going on. And if we can engage with them and find out how quickly they can they soon become um, somebody else we can be utilising to sell that message in the council. And um, the nice guy Eddie engaged and nice with high level messaging and training. We do need people that understand it even if they don't implement it. So even if they're not the, the person actually using the tool every day, 
you need that person to sell it to Joe, to the corporate, to tell them that it's all going all right, or to trust the maverick and what they're doing, what their design is going to work. Um, pulling on some of, of my experience, um, having worked with Objective in two local authorities and a shared service, it was implemented in two very different ways. And although these characters were um, uh, in present in both organisations, I think it's fair to say that we had a very different approach to implementing that digital platform in both authorities. One was well established, it was corporate messaging, this is how we're going to use this tool to do external engagement. You must go through this corporate team to do your external engagement and they will help you get there. And it was just kind of that's, that's what was done and that's how, how it worked. And in another organisation, it had laid dormant <laughs> for a number of years and wasn't utilised. And uh, we were trying to breathe life back into this platform. And the culture wasn't there that we'd automatically go to this corporate centre to make things happen. Actually, we wanted to work in directorates. The directorates were big enough and ugly enough to make their own decisions, actually, on what we wanted to consult on and who. And fine, you know, that's absolutely fine as long as we've got the buy-in from those corporate directors to manage that process. And so um, I had the same characters in both authorities whilst I was implementing the same tool. But I was doing it in two very, very different ways, which meant having to handle those people in two di different ways, um, which again, I think, has its own challenge. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. We've been quite flippant in using our reservoir dogs and to get people to think about the personalities. Um, but everyone here knows those people, but everyone here would have a different answer to how we handle those people because all of your organisations are different. And it's that vision of Joe's at the top that's going to drive everything else. Is there one corporate director or one chief exec or one CEO that needs to control it all? Or can we devolve some of that responsibility to allow those people to, to run with it and be mavericks in their own way? And I don't think that's a decision that an individual can make. That depends on the culture of the organisation, how mature they are in engagement and using <coughs> tools such as this. Um, I, think, I think from the supply, uh, supplier side, uh, it's also very interesting that the two, two neighbouring authorities that it's referring to um, and from a, from a contractual perspective if you like, so the, the, both were identical, so the same, same software solutions licensed in the same way, they procured them in different time scales, unfortunately the shared services haven't come together when they procured our software, so but it, it was standard procurement routes, um, competitive, we won, went in, scoped it, implemented it. But actually, the difference in take up and usage and, and, and the actual the benefits, the value that was driven out of the software was significantly different in the two organisations. It actually came into the process after both organisations had, had procured, so she was inheriting the, le the legacy, um, uh, to, to be fair to her. Um, but, but, but actually, it, it really was very, very different. And I think um, one, one organisation's culture was a bit more centralistic, but a bit, a bit more actually saying something was corporate had some weight, um, and, and the platform did work better there. Um, the other organisation was, was very directorate driven, uh, and, and it was really left up to the directorates to take this thing, here's the stuff, this is what it does, go do stuff with it. And, and actually, ma massive black holes in the organisation where they just wouldn't go anywhere near it, and we're still using Sterling. Goodness knows. 118 survey monkey licenses all and, 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 and all sorts of strange things. <laughs> because because there was because there was nobody there driving driving the change process, either from a digital strategy engagement channelship perspective, or from more of a democratic, you know, open policy making, accountability side of things, and both are missing in that in that particular organization. So, you know, although the characters are the same, very clearly there isn't a prescribed way of doing it, it's, it's about dealing with those characters in your, in your context. Um, again, very happy to talk about those individual experiences and anything else, um, uh, just come and find me or get in touch or the deals around the place. I did, uh, did say as a teaser in the, um, in, in the introduction about, about Kieran's inquiry, now being a, uh, an ex-public servant, I was brought up in the world of the Audit Commission, in fact, I did my work experience with the Audit Commission because my father worked for them before me. Um, so, um, so I've been through a, num a number of, uh, of inspections and I'm very used to the sort of key language and inquiry approach. So shortly after joining Objective, um, working with some of our more mature customers using our software, we built a set of key language inquiry 
I, I stole the Audit Commission's, it, it, look, it looks and feels like the Audit Commission stuff, um, which you're very open about, but it essentially it's a, it's a key line, so it's a set of questions and um, kind of benchmarks around the maturity of your organisation for um, on, on digital platforms and collaboration and engagement. Now, because we've, we've tended to um, deploy that within our, our existing customer base, some of it does refer to our software, but, but in reality, it could, it could be any any platforms that you're using. Um, we, we sell it as a service to our customers. I'd be very happy to share the key lines of inquiry with practitioners if they would want to look at it and maybe think, just, just use it as a way of um, sort of measuring a bit of maturity in your own organisation. So again, um, through various channels, you can get some, just, just let me know, we can have a chat about, about how to do that. It's not a commercial offering, it's just something to give back to you guys. Um, when, when I was working with, um, with, with it, we, we, we ran this as a sort of, sort of managed service and uh, did some interviews and some desktop studies and stuff and came out with an output report. And again, similar to the Audit Commission ways of working, there'd be you know, a, a report and some, some actions and then some prioritization of actions so that you've got a deliverable action. Um, those, are, those are some of the kind of headline questions that we built around it. There are others. I didn't want to label the point too much, but just to say that it's actually quite useful. And I think particularly, for many of us who've been in local government for a long time, quite a familiar approach that is going to start with the horses too much and rather than getting some consultant coming and start, start talking about reservoir dogs, which, which might spook some of the, of the colleagues that has indeed spooked some of you today. Um, so uh, we've got about 10 minutes. Um, I'm very happy to kind of, sort of throw this open for a bit more discussion. Any questions you've got for either Adam or myself, um, or you can use the time to meditate. You can. You can, you can, if you want to, seriously, there's, a, there's an iPad mini going here, so... Don't enter, I will it. <laughs> it is already entered, so by default, if you don't, you win it. <laughs> all sorts of horrible connotations. Uh, so, so um, just in, in that blank space on one of those, just write in the name of the character that, that you're going to engage with, or they are going to challenge by, take a photograph, tweet it, and, um, and you'll be in the draw. Um, any, any questions, comments? Reflections. But I've already got some innovation, so I don't, I don't need any more. <laughs> Anything you want to add, Edith? No, I just I think um, I think we, what we wanted to do is just really step away from the IT solution for a minute and think about the people that use it. Um, and I hope that this time has given you that chance to reflect on some of those people when you go back. Enjoy this conference. Good to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.